Ladies, it. What is it? Are you ready for it? Are you hoping for it? Are you fulfilling it? Or are you full of it? <laughs> it's time to take that it really seriously. You know the it. The one that rumbles around your head in the middle of the night. The one that's been on your to-do list for months, decades, years. It. And left to our own devices, you probably won't fulfill it again this year either. Think about it. What is it? Is it writing that book? Is it shedding those extra pounds? Is it working? Hours that are less and more rewarding. Is it walking or running those three or five times a day? A day? How about a week? <laughs> is it doing your core exercises, and Tracy will get into this a little bit later. <laughs> so she's here. What is it? That thing that's been gnawing at you, that's been gnawing at your ambition, that wakes you up in the middle of the night, that you feel kind of guilty about sometimes in those quiet moments when you think about your health, your future, your family, your friends, your success, your life. What is it? if you weren't full of it. So it's time to pay attention to it for this year. How else is this year going to be a year like no other? An extraordinary year, a com an uncommon year for you, for your success, for your ambition. So would it be all right with you if I showed you a way to make things happen, to make sure that it happens? Would that be okay yes. with you? Yes. yes. Good. Good. You've just demonstrated to me that you are ambitious women. Because I'll tell you, there are rooms where I would ask that question and there would be silence. Oh. <laughs> and I'd have to say, okay, this is the time to participate. This is your turn, but not you. You are, by that action, declared ambitious women. Because... Left by our own default nature, fulfilling your it is not likely to happen this year either. So let's talk about a new way to go about it. At Influence Ecology, we teach a transactional cycle for transacting for what we want in life, for our own success, our own aims, and let me be really clear, it's not a manipulative transaction cycle. And there are some of those out in the world today. This is one with integrity and where you are co-creating life in an environment that's consequential. Now that word may sound unfamiliar to you, consequential, but we'll get to that a little later. There are going to be two or three of you in this room where this information that you're going to hear in the next 20 minutes is going to change your life. It's going to change the course of your life. It's going to change your ambition. It's going to change your belief that you can get what you want, <coughs> that you can actually assign yourself lofty aims and accomplish them in a consistent way. And there are going to be some of you where you're not ready. It's just not the right thing for you. And that's okay, too. Now, Tracy has a brochure that she's going to pass out. Because I'm going to show you this transaction cycle. And I can't show you the whole thing. Because we need about two hours. And we don't have that. So I'm going to be focusing right down in the bottom half. And 
in fact, I'm going to be focusing really in the bottom quarter because you're going to do the other quarter. Okay, and I'll have a hand up for you shortly. Because I'm not able to cover the whole thing, I want you to know that I'm available for coffee to just talk about these concepts. We also have, I was telling Mary this earlier, a 30-day free guest pass on our website at Influence Ecology. So sign up. Go kick the tires. Go see if it's right for you. You'll know after 30 days exploring that website. There are podcasts, people who are explaining what they've been able to do with this global education program. So if you're interested in that, make sure just to give me your name, email address, and truly, we'll have coffee. Truly, because I love having coffee. Okay, back to, the, back to the transaction cycle. So can everybody see this okay? All right. In the light. And it's in the light. Voila! <laughs> So this is the narrative of a transaction cycle, and I'm going to guide you through it. It starts up here at noon. Doesn't everything. High noon. And in this quadrant, this is the invent quadrant. This is where, when you're developing a transa transaction, you have infinite possibilities. When you think about it, we have infinite possibilities if you want to lose weight. Infinite ways to do that, really. If you want to write a book, infinite ways to go about writing a book, or infinite possibilities in your it. How many of you have 10 it's out there? How many, when you got the, yeah, mm, okay. All right, we'll be narrowing it down, okay. <laughs> we all also know people who are filled with good intentions, and it never gets farther than that, right? We all know people, they get, they get into this invent phase, and it's like, okay, oh, shiny object there, let's do this, let's do that over here, let's do that, and nothing ever happens, right? You know that. They're stuck in this area of the transaction cycle, and we may find ourselves stuck here too, called analysis paralysis. Yeah. So the key to success, partially, is making sure you get around the cycle. It's kind of like shoots and ladders. Anybody ever played that? Yeah, okay, I aged myself. <laughs> There's a gateway here, and you don't get to go backwards like the turnstile in the subway. It doesn't work to go backwards, okay? So when you move from infinite possibilities into the next quadrant, you're narrowing it down to one possibility, and that's what you'll be doing today. One it. What is it? I'm going to invite you to pick a simple one, so you can really experience the cycle, because there's some magic that happens over in the third quadrant. And I want you to have the opportunity to dig into that and really enjoy that experience of applying intentional consequences. <clears throat> and you'll be doing that in your mentor ring, but we'll talk about it. All right, so over here, <laughs> this will be your homework. So. We're not going to pass these out yet, but I want to kind of give you a roadmap. In this quadrant right here, when you get your hand out, you're going to be writing the answers to these questions. Okay? One possibility. What is that it that you're choosing today to work with today? It's not the only one. It's just today's. <coughs> it doesn't have to be the perfect one. It's just today's. Having some fun. And then, so what? Now, there have been lots of people who have talked about you need to know your why. So you don't need to hear me repeating that. But for many of you, your why may need to expand beyond you. Expand to your grandchildren. And I know Glenda's got that one dialed in. <laughs> yeah. Expand to the loved one you leave behind to make their life easier. And I'm in this exact experience with my mother. That's why I bring it up. Exact experience. So the first, the things that you'll be putting in this quadrant are one possibility, it, and so what? Why would you even bother? Why would you go to the energy of this whole process of trying to uh, have ambitious actions in your life? Why would you even go through that? Let's make sure that it's really it. Then as you move the cycle, you're going to need to know what to do. And this kind of is where we cross over here. What do you need to do? 
For those of us that want to lose weight, like, that we know what to do for the most part. Okay? We hire Tracy. <laughs> um, for those of you who want to write a book, maybe you know what to do, maybe you don't. I've had several people who recently have wanted to learn how to swim. Did, do they know what to do? Uh-uh. They need to contact, ask for help. They need to contact somebody who can teach them to swim, right? Because that's not an easy experience for those of us that didn't get it when we were two or three. Okay? So those are the things you're going to be working with when we go to your workshops. Now let's talk about consequences. Remember, there's a gateway here that's one directional. You don't get to go back when you're in a transaction cycle. Because right here is where most people say, ha, ah, this isn't working out so well. I'm going to go back and refigure this out. It doesn't go that way. You can only go forward. So remember, if you're setting your consequences and think that you can weasel out of the measures that you're setting for yourself, it doesn't work that way. And that's why we fail to meet our aims and our goals in a consistent way. Here's the news, and one of my bullet points was the one thing people will never do to ensure their success. That was one of my bullet points. This is it. They won't apply consequences to themselves that hurt. These are consequences that need to make you nauseous, and I'm going to give you a couple right here, right? These are consequences where you don't get to vote. Now, some of you have heard me ask this question before. How many of you, when you woke up this morning, voted, really negotiated with yourself whether you were going to brush your teeth? Raise your hand. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No, nobody's going to do that. However, when you were two or three, or I don't, I don't remember those times when Mother was trying to put that gooey stuff in my mouth and said, it's good for you, just do it so your teeth don't fall out, right? Those were consequences. So it's not that we're not used to them. We're just not used to applying them to ourselves. And that's what you're going to learn today. Okay? Let me give you a couple stories so you have examples of consequences. Oh, good. We're right on time. Uh, before you go into your action items. Okay? And remember, the consequences you will do in the mentor room. So don't worry about it now. And I'll be, I'm not going to participate in the mentor ring. I'm going to wander around, wander around. I'm going to be available to you <laughs> to answer questions, to raise the bar, to look at how do I make this consequence nauseous producing. Okay, but let's hear some stories. So my first story is actually with Tracy. Now, she's training me. And we've been at this three months. And I'm doing my walk-run metrics. I have measures. On the average, <coughs> over a six-month period, I have an average of walking, running, it's a combo, two and a half times a week. I'm nailing that metric. It's with somebody else. And they post it in a public <coughs> forum every other week so everybody can see, and I don't want to look bad. That's one of the things that drives me. I don't want to look bad. Boy, I nail those walk runs it's even when it's freezing cold outside, even when it's pouring down rain. I do it. I don't vote because I don't want to see my name up there with big gooses. <coughs> okay. I start working with Tracy, and she has some exercises to do to strengthen my core and strengthen my back. Guess what? Lizard, lizard brain, I'm not doing it because there is no threat. Our brains are designed to avoid threat way, 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 way back. We're not going to get over that. That's not going to go away. No amount of inspiration, motivation, positive thinking, positive affirmations, none of it is going to interrupt lizard brain. None of it. Think about it. If inspiration and motivation and positive self-talk, and you've heard me talk about all that stuff before, if it was enough, if desire was enough, We'd all be skinny, rich, and pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we would. Not enough. Consequences. So, I wasn't doing my exercises, and we met Monday. And I handed her 
a Ben Franklin, a hundred dollar bill. I said, you keep this. If I don't do my exercises, and we're gonna measure every month, if I don't do my exercises two and a half times, I just kept the same metrics, every single week for a month, we're gonna stop the measure at a month. If I haven't done it, you keep the hundred. And I add another one. Okay, see, notice the nausea, okay? It made me nauseous. I thought, what the hell did I do that to myself for? And if I don't make it the next month, I add another. So at the end of our agreement, six months, if I don't make my numbers, she makes $600. I love Tracy, but I don't want her to get my money that way. Right? But it's working. I did them last night. I didn't feel like it. I didn't vote. If you want something to keep things top of mind for you, if you happen to find yourself saying, gee, I forgot, uh-uh, not buying it. Well, it. I'm not buying it. You don't forget. It may not be a top of mind. And having <coughs> consequence will keep it top of mind. Here's another one. I work with a lady who has an art piece that has been handed down seven generations. She has people who want to buy it. It's worth a lot of money. Well, she wasn't doing her walking either. <laughs> five days a week. 30 minutes. Five days a week. Not doing it. So we developed a consequence together because you do that together with somebody who's skilled at doing that, at finding that nauseous point. And she said, okay, if I don't do my exercises, I'll sell the piece of art. And I said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Jean. You're not going to sell it. You're going to donate it. <laughs> Feel the nausea. Feel it. That's what you're looking for when you do your consequences in this exercise. Uh, because, and she said, oh, no, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. And I said, exactly, <laughs> you're not committed. Tell me, you can't walk for 30 minutes five times a week in order to avoid selling a precious piece of art. You don't care enough about it. You need to get a bigger aim. You need to get a bigger goal. Let's stop pretending. Our aims and goals are important, but are they that important? And this is the way to ensure that they're that important. Once and for all, get it done. Get after it. And that's how you do it. Some of you have never heard this before. And some of you aren't going to like what you hear. But three or four of you are going to want to learn more. Here's one more story. Another client, a guy, kind of a buff guy. <clears throat> He wants to do, he's working with me, we've been working together a few months, and he keeps wanting to do his morning devotional. I'm not doing it. Next call next week, he's not doing it. Next call the next week, he feels bad, still not doing it. Next call the next week, he still feels bad, he feels worse, he's going to do better this time. You've heard that. You've used that. I'm going to do better next week. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not going to happen. I said, okay, okay, Sean, I sometimes do this with my clients. Are you ready for this? He said, okay, bring it on. Kind of a buff guy, right? <coughs> okay, I explained what I've explained to you. He said, okay, I could give X number of dollars to a least favorite charity. That's always a good one. Money to your least favorite <laughs> charity or political candidate. That usually, yeah, that usually brings up the nausea right away. Oh, he said, oh, okay, I'll give it to my least favorite charity. He said, at least I don't have to do this. And I went, oh, you just let it out of the bag. That's what you got to do. So there's a guy, another guy, at a networking group who Sean despises Joe. Just can't stand him. Just, you know, there are those. Anyway, I said, so here's your consequence. You get to take Joe out for lunch. He goes, no, no, not that. I said, oh, yeah, and it gets better. It gets better. You get to have a two-hour lunch, and you get to listen to him complain and whine and lecture you, and, and you just get to listen two hours. And he goes, no, anything but that. And I said, yes, and you get to pay. <laughs> and he goes, no, I get to stop. And I said, no, there's one more. You're going to do it every week. You don't do your devotional. Oh, there goes the nausea. Right? That's what you're looking for. Because 
if left to your own devices, it won't happen this year either. John's a new man. His devotionals haven't stopped. <laughs> so, let's go to your exercises while we have some time and then I'll wrap up. Uh, so, here's what. They've all been passed around? They have. Yay, thank you. So, in the left column, I guess, yes, it's your left column. Write down, just take two minutes and write down what your it is. What is it? <coughs> so what? Right. Who cares? Right. In that, yeah. in your left. Oh, oh no, excuse me. Yeah, I right. turned around. Thank right. you. In your right. <laughs> Tracy was a school teacher, not me. In your right. <laughs> what is your it? <coughs> One possibility. Keep it simple, so we can practice with consequences. And so what? Why is it important? Why would you go to the effort? <coughs> Right. And then for those of you who are ready to move on, you can move to the <coughs> center section. What must you do? Now, for some of us, we know what to do. We know how to lose weight. But for others of us, we may not. Uh, one of my it's, because, you know, I'm steeped in this because I'm developing this talk. Right? I'm living it. Uh, one of my it's is that w creating a will, power of attorney, financial and medical, I learned my lesson with my mother. I sure don't want to leave my husband in that situation. And I sure don't know. <coughs> so I don't know how to do that. And I wish there was an estate planning attorney in the room because I, we'd be having coffee, right? So for you, if you know what to do, write, write it down, write a few items down. Walk more, eat less, hire a trainer, there may be other things that you don't know. And so then your only action item would be, by the end of the week, have coffee, find out how to do it. So this bottom section is just work in action. This is where it gets binary. You either do it or you don't. Do it or you don't. There could be some things on your list to do that you're not comfortable with. Good. All right, let's go ahead and, and wrap that up. You'll get a, a few more opportunities because we're going to break <coughs> into here, which is the place nobody ever wants to look is what happens if I don't do those things? We all know the goodies. We get the goodies if we do those things, if we do that walking and eat less and do my core exercises and write those 100 pages a week or whatever it is to write that book. We know we get the goodies. What happens when you don't do it? And that's what we're going to do when you break out into your mentor ring, is apply your consequences. <clears throat> Remember, it's time to get nauseous. It's time to be uncomfortable. My commitment to you is that you have an uncommon year, that you have an ambitious year filled with the things, the satisfaction that you desire. If you follow this cycle or learn how to follow this transaction cycle, you will have that extraordinary year. So I leave you with this. Are you fulfilling it or are you full of it? <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And I don't know.